we're going to look at how we can use Python to integrate that and query SQL Server databases and then export the results into CSV format. So we have a sort of use case here um, and that would be where we need to potentially just export results daily to alert us as to uh, people whose passwords are expiring. So we've got a script here that we're going to recreate, but essentially uh, we're going to go through a st few stages, importing in dependencies or packages, and then we will form our credentials, so our connection details. Then we will query the relevant data, which could be whatever you want. We'll place this into a pandas data frame, so a, a structure here, much like a table. Um, and that's going to then allow us to convert that using pandas to a CSV. We'll name it with the current date and time. And then we'll we'll collect that CSV file. So if I was to run this now, we can see that the, the script will run. And then when we look into our folder structure here within our Explorer, we get the result here, which is a CSV with the result, the output of that query. If I double click there, we'll see it loaded in here within um, VS Code. So that's what we're going to go through today. We're going to create this. I'll show you what, what we require, why we require it, uh, um, and all of this sort of details. In a project like this, usually the most complex part uh, when working with sort of drivers or APIs is actually getting the credentials right. Uh, after that, it's, it's, some, it's some pretty simple code here. So, so we'll go through this now. Primarily what we're going to use here is the Pi ODBC module. And it can easily be installed within your command prompt using pip install pi odbc. Of course, if you've not used the command prompt before and this is really your first time venturing into Python potentially or, or a Python project, you can just use here. You can find it in your search bar or your start bar. Just type cmd and what you will get is the command prompt. And this is where we can again go ahead and install. So in this case, it would be pip install and then the name of your package or module so it'll be pi odbc and then you could click enter and go through it that way however um yeah we can we can see that clearly here pip install pi odbc a lot of you will likely have used command prompt so so we don't necessarily need to dive in there um, but as we can see it's a db database api module and like i said Traditionally, with these sorts of projects, the actual code in the script isn't too complex, but usually playing around with APIs and finding out what works is quite tricky, which is why I want to go over this in sort of full format. So as we can see here, a brief overview, it's an open source Python module, and it allows us to access ODBC databases. So this could obviously be extended beyond SQL Server. Um, I'm choosing to use SQL Server because that's what I primarily use. But yeah, it implements DB API specification, but it's got lots of Pythonic convenience. So obviously native to the way that we like to like to use Python. And if you're using Mac, you should go ahead and use Homebrew. But like I've shown, usually we would use the the uh, command prompt or terminal within um, within Mac and the the standard sort of pip installation. So that's all that we really need to know about PyODBC. That's going to be the interface that we actually use through Python to connect into our SQL database. So that will be integral to this project that we're, we're sort of building here will be pandas, of course. Uh, as we see here in the short blurb, well, first of all, you can install it with pip install pandas again in the command prompt or terminal. Uh, and powerful data structures for data analysis, time series, and statistics. Essentially, what you need to know about pandas, if you've not encountered it, is it's sort of the gold standard in Python uh, for data analysis and transformations and so on. So a bit of a blur, Python package, fast, flexible, expressive data structures, uh, making working with relational um, data easy and intuitive. High level building block, real world data analysis, uh, broader goal of becoming the most powerful and flexible open source data analysis or manipulation tool. So a few things that Pandas does well, if you've not used it before, handling missing data, uh, inserting, deleting, appending data, uh, grouping data together, common functionality with SQL, getting to that level of aggregation, merging, joining, reshaping, and so on. 
So we will just, uh, if you've not used this before, you can use pip install pandas to get that. Um, and we'll we'll get moving with the last of the detail before we start building out this project. Last of the, the dependencies, the things that we require to build out this project would be, if we're using SQL Server, certainly, would be our server name and then the database name that we intend to query data from. So what we're going to do here is we here you can actually source your server name i've just got a local edition here while i'm using my my local version uh, through through sql server right now so this is your server name within this box however what i will show you is if you connect up and get running there is another way that you can go ahead and get your server name in sql server so we start up a new query you can just say select and we can say double at and then server name here, we'll just alias it, say as server name, execute the query, and that will display our server as well. You can right click, copy this, and take it into our um, our project in Python uh, at, the, at the correct time. It's also worth noting, uh, I'll get rid of that. The database that I will be using, certainly, and you may have this, so you may be able to, to join along, is AdventureWorks 2019. Uh, you can easily download this, if you like, uh, from, from Google. It's a slightly more complex if you go down the, the route of restoring a backup file. I do have another video, a link, uh, that you can use to also go ahead and, and import this data, if you like. So within my databases, as you can see, I'm going to use AdventureWorks 2019 expand out the structure and the table specifically that we're going to use is person.password so if I just query this quickly I'll say select all columns star from person.password there excuse the query and we get some some pretty basic data here we get the password hash the business entity ID password salt row GUID and modified data. Of course, you could use this in a more complex environment. Uh, traditionally, passwords, you know, if you're working within, uh, let's say, the security or IT side of a business may have to be reset every 90 days or so on. This could help um, be filled, filtered into a system where you give people warnings uh, or, or you can at least scope out when certain users' passwords uh, are, are expiring. So it's quite a, quite a useful use case. There are obviously more things. If you had more data, such as an expiry date, uh, you could filter this, you could use your where, um, and so on. So it's a very, what I would say, real-world use case that would be commonly used, and, and this is a way that we could uh, certainly query databases, and, and all the better to do it within Python in a slightly more automated fashion. Actually going to go ahead now, piece everything together, look at, we've got all the dependencies sort of aligned, and we can actually go ahead and just build the project. Uh, and look at, see this sort of um, magic here in a relatively simple script. We can start to automate tasks, one of the beauty uh, of Python. And you may go into a lot of organizations or even if you're working personally. And there's a large requirement for Python automation. I've seen it a lot. Uh, and I use Python to automate tasks a lot. It's a fantastic open source language um, and tool to do this. So the first thing that we'll do, we'll just write a comment here to say that we're just... Um, We'll say uh, dependencies to install. This would be our, our pit packages and modules. Um, I've already done this and I've went through it in the steps before this, but you may need to. So if you if you do need to follow along, that would be pip install pandas. You would need to type into your command prompt cmd in the start bar or terminal on Mac. And we can say pip install and that will be pyodbc course referencing an ODBC connection uh, to our database. So that's sorted. What we can do now is because we've installed it, we can import pandas and I'll give it an alias just for good practice. If we were going to use this, um, it's handy to have a shortened version. Commonly you'll see pandas imported as PD. Uh, I'll import PYODBC as and I'll just call this ODBC. We can be flexible on how we use that alias. And we'll use date time later on. So from date time, we'll also import date time. 
sort of sub module here um, and that's going to be relevant later on because we're actually going to use uh, date time to output a file uh, that represents the current date and time so they're the packages uh, you don't need to pip install date time it's it's contained within python already uh, it would just be pandas and pyodbc if you don't have them already installed if you do want to see the packages you have installed you can again go into um, your command prompt and type pip freeze and that will that, that will let you know our pip list you can see the packages that you have installed or you could just type pip install the package name and, and it would let you know if you already have that installed so now we're going to list the credentials um so we'll say list credentials and this is going to be we'll be using odbc.connect so we need to have some, you know, a certain amount of uh, credentials, logons, whatever that may be, drivers, server names uh, to list so that we can actually connect into SQL Server. So I'll just say list credentials and um, we're going to query just this note. We looked at it later, but if you do want to go back and uh, have a T-SQL code to query a server name, uh, that will just be using select that server name here so we can we can use that if you're if you're actually within a query window in sql server and you want to use tsql to find out your server name um, and we are going to use something in this in the connection properties below uh the the trusted connection property so just let you know what that means as well trusted connection uh, ignores the user id and password keys so uid that's how we would sort of state them within the credentials and password keys and, and the reason uh, i don't need to use this because i'm just using a local version so i don't need to log on with a specified sql uh, username or password a lot of the times you would so you would need to actually specify it in these credentials below uh, but if you're using just a sort of windows integrated you don't need to but there are other sort of logins such as um you know, multi-factor authentication, you may have specific SQL logons within your, your server. So it's important to note that. So here we go. I'm just going to call this connection string, the, the credential properties. And I'll say these are equal to, and we'll say ODBC, because that's what we imported PyODBC as. So we're using that. You'll see the white line disappears within Atom uh, to show that we're actually, we started to use it. You may use other text editors, that's fine, such as Atom, PyCharm, maybe even Jupyter Notebooks. I find that a, a, a stronger IDE is good for um, processes when we're connecting to APIs. Uh, so that's why I've chosen VS Code. So you say odbc.connect. And what we need to do now, open up some parentheses. I am simply just spacing them out uh, just for readability purely. So the first thing that we're going to need is we will essentially have have four lines here. So we will have the um, the driver first. So uh, driver just standard here and we need to say driver is equal to and in curly braces we will put the name of our driver there and I will also just finish this off with a semicolon. So my driver is going to be a SQL Server native client. Let me just uh, see server native client 11.0. And, and also it's worth noting that sort of stating out the the native client driver i think native clients sort of been phased out after i think it was sql server uh before 2016 even so that that driver hasn't changed because i believe i'm running i upgraded to sql server uh 2022 and this is still functioning fine so that's the first line driver and it's sql server native client 11.0 oh, there's a good chance that your driver is the same uh, if not you can google how to actually find out the the driver by going through your your file explorer through that way so i will just copy and paste this line a few times because this is the basic syntax uh, that we'll need 
Actually, I won't do that. Maybe a bit more confusing to do it that way. So the next line that we will require will be the server. And I showed you how to how to get your server. That was querying the SQL script above, select at, at server name, or it will be there when you load up SQL Server Management Studio also. So say my server is equal to, and for me, it's desktop because I'm using my, my local version, desktop, and it will be e six e obviously this is going to be different um however you're using it but just as a guide this is for me so it should be desktop and then dash d6 e 7 j o f and i will also need to remember to have my semicolon here my next line will be the database that i choose so that will be equal to adventureworks 2019 as discussed before Easy for you to get a sample. I have linked that um, prior to this within the video. So database is equal to AdventureWorks 2019. And then I will say trusted connection is equal to yes. So I'll just set it out as it's, um, as we have to specify these credential namings. Obviously, usually I wouldn't use an underline, I would use Pascal case, uh, capitalizing the start of each, each other word. That's how I like to list my naming conventions, but I don't have much choice here. So there we go. And I will just move this uh, closing parenthesis up one step there. So we've got connection string is equal to odbc.connect. The driver, we've got the server there. Server name, we've got the database adventure works 2019 with a semicolon. Trusted colon is equal to yes there. So that looks that looks quite good. Um yeah, I think we can we can move on from there now. So the next thing that we require is we're actually going to write our query. And we're actually going to write the query um with the pandas read function. So it will look something like this. I will say query that's what i'm going to name this variable and it will be td dot read underscore sql this one here the beauty of intellisense here read sql query again i need to open up parenthesis i'm going to again open up these these lines and what i will do is i will state three quotation marks just so that i can better uh, space out my query here and i will say select and it will be the columns that i'm going to take just in this example will be business entity id and it will be password hash and row UID, of course, meaning globally unique identifier for that row. So every item within our uh, table, every sort of row will have its unique identifier. And I will say from, and I will get rid of this blurb here. I will say from uh, person.password. That's the table that we're choosing to query. So select business entity ID, password hash, row GUID. We've got separated by the triple quotation marks to give us more space. Um, in presenting this over multiple lines. And lastly, what I will do is just reference where we're taking this from, the credentials. Obviously, the server, the database, the driver. So I need to specify that variable there, which will be connection string. Okay. And lastly, well, almost lastly, penultimately, we will need to specify the data frame, so I'll just give it the uh, the variable df in capitals is equal to pd dot data frame. We can see here, oh, that's the wrong one. pd dot data frame. This first option within here, the data frame that we we want to create is from the query results there. So above, so the great thing about this, if you're if you're sort of quite new to Python or your intermediate, we don't have to focus too much on, you know, we don't have to create functions or classes. It's quite a short script and a lot of its credentials, but it's very sequential, very easy to follow. We've got our connection properties, which get fed in uh, to create this query from, from the connection string. We specify the query. We're creating a data frame from that query, which you can think of a data frame almost like a, like a table in the real world. And then 
we've got pd.dataframe query and then we just want to set our file path and you could specify what, what we would call a fixed file path where you give the exact path in your computer sort of with C, users, desktop, files, Python files, whatever that may be. But we're just going to set a, a relative file path so it'll output it um, in the same working directory. That's why out of good practice I've called this main.py because if we had sensitive credential information, we could actually set up another file like a .env and import with the .env package, or we could set up a file called credentials.py and import it in. But we're just doing everything off this one page just for simplicity. So we'll set our file path, and it'll, it can just be a relative file path. And this is where, if you've not worked a lot with sort of string formatting in Python, uh, it may, may look a bit... Um, bit complex here but I'll, I'll explain it as we go along so it's say date frame dot two underscore csv and within here we will specify so we're going to take the date time from our date time that we imported dot now get rid of this blurb again because it gets a bit annoying date time dot now and we will say we'll have this in string format so date time dot now dot strf time and we can specify the way that we want to output that date time so we will start off with two quotation marks and we will use our percentage say year have a dash percentage and month dash percentage and day and then underscore and we will go ahead and format our time now so if you bear with me, we'll get this typed out. Um, so we will go ahead, S. And don't worry, this looks a little bit intimidating because I'll explain it shortly. So that should be the correct formatting. Here, capital Y, go into lowercase md, uppercase after the underscore I, M, S, and P. And then what we will do is we need to append on the rest of the text so that's going to give us the current date and time as the file name and we just need to append on this text here so i'll give a dash and then i'll say sql user password data dot csv because it's going to be a csv file that we we download it all into and then we will say index because we don't want to have an index in our pandas data frame we'll just put false there and so now what we have here it looks all right we've got the date time dot now string formatting we specify how we want to format um this date time value which we've done and we're appending on the text sql user password data dot csv index equals false so to review uh, if you want to sort of check everything here we've got pip install pandas pio o odbc we're importing in our dependencies we've used them all they're no longer underlined white first of all we list our credentials we can get our server name from the sql server management studio sort of log on screen or within tsql by using select at at server name and we ignore we use trusted connection equals yes to ignore any dependency we would have on a user id and password because we're just doing this locally uh, likely you would have to uh, add to this credentials a UID and PWD, which would be your SQL Server username, your logon, and your password. So the, we call this connection string. Really, we're just giving the connect properties for Pi ODBC that we've aliased as ODBC. Driver, server, database, and trusted connections. So fine. Classic sample database, the name, and the driver, which will likely be the same for yourself, but you may need to check that in your files. The query we state, and we're using pd.read sql query, and then we state our query, the connection string, and then the data frame, and then we set our file path, date time now string, here we go, and then we append on the rest of the file name, and an index equals false. So what happens if we run this? We'll run it within our terminal, and we've got our query, goes through that, open up our explorer you see uh, at this time now at uh, 8 13 pm and we've got the uh, sql user passwords that's all 
perfect. When we double click here, the same working directory. So wherever you have this stored within your file explorer as well, you'll be able to find this output. And we get business entity ID, password, raw GUID, and then we get all of our data in CSV format. And CSV obviously important because that's very commonly used um, in the in the sort of working world. Uh, when we're sort of doing more sort of one-off pieces like this. So really, this is a, a definitely a, a real-world project. So important to uh, to learn these sorts of things. Yes, there are ways that you could make this a bit more sophisticated with usernames, with passwords. You could output this with SQL, but often tasks like this are done using Python. It's great to understand Python automation and working through a APIs and drivers. Um, and yeah, this is this is something that uh, that can be very useful. So so hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, uh, whatever you like. It it helps the channel and and helps me understand uh, what viewers tend to enjoy. Thank you.